So back in 2008 and 2009 when I was playing with LEGO, I had a fascination with uh, pneumatics and more specifically uh, pneumatic engines. I used to take apart air hogs and take the engines and put them into uh, LEGO enclosures. The first attempt at this was pretty clunky. And then I put two engines together. and blew them up. Uh -oh. At one point I was experimenting with a clutch with the pneumatic engine. And then the last project that I did was one engine in a very compact Lego enclosure. So I put this compact engine inside of a dragster. And uh, that seemed to work pretty well. Now fast forward eight years, and I have the same urge to play with some pneumatics again. So what do I do? I look on Kijiji to see if anyone's selling pneumatic engines. And slowly I start to accumulate uh, old Airhog's toys, and unfortunately they don't make them anymore, which is kind of disappointing. Everything now is electric, which is uh, also disappointing. So now I have all these Airhog's toys, and the next step is to take them apart and isolate the motor from the rest of the vehicle. Unfortunately, due to the manufacturing process, each Airhog's engine enclosure is different. Two of them look like they wouldn't be compatible with LEGO, but to my relief, the engines can be unscrewed and taken apart. So I was actually able to salvage the two broken engines for parts and combine them with the newly bought working motors. Ta-da! Six engines. The first part was making the crankshaft axle compatible with LEGO. To do this, I used an extension LEGO joint and carefully cut and glued it into place over top of the original axle. Now for the tough part, attaching an air tube to the motor. This took a bit of elbow grease. I carefully grinded, sanded, and using some epoxy and super glue, glued an air tube to the motor. Now for the motor housings. This was sort of an evolutionary process, and the first ones were designed years ago, but they were bulky and really inefficient. Eventually I wound up with this compact design that worked across most engines and was very lightweight and efficient. Each motor is tested for functionality up to 80 psi, the maximum working pressure of the engine, just to make sure there's no leaks, and to see if the engine actually works. Once all the engines are housed, they are tested again to make sure that the axle joint is strong enough to operate under load. I was able to turn the housings into two inline-3 engines. Here is the first test run of the completed inline-3 engine. Once I finished the second inline three, I tried sticking them together to see if I could get six cylinders working. Unfortunately, two of the motors weren't working properly and the excess housing created too much friction for it to actually run. So you guys probably want to see what this thing can do inside of a car. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten to that stage yet as I've retired the engines, uh, there's still a few issues with getting the maximum power out of them. And I'm saving that project for another time down the road. So hopefully I'll see you in a few years with a working V6 Airhogs engine dragster or something crazy like that. I was thinking about a bulldozer, but we'll see what happens. All right, see you next time, guys.